So good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Niranjan. I am from Rome Semiconductor. I take care of uh, ASEAN India market for business development. And uh, today I would like to talk uh, about machine health uh, monitoring under uh, industrial IoT. So basic, uh, today I'll be talking about these three topics, industrial IoT market trends, uh, sensors for IoT, and finally, how do you send that data using a communication tool? So what does the IoT devices do? Yeah, definitely some of our partners have already spoken wide about uh, IoT sensors and communication. Just to recap, uh, the final source of gateway, you need a communication tool with some sensors to get the data out of your applications all the way down here. And uh, you need to have a processing feedback back to your application area so that you can do predictive maintenance or health monitoring and so on. So today's topic I'll be con uh, concerning only regarding the sensors and the communication, a few of the communication uh, modules uh, which are very widely used in uh, industrial IoT. So I know that many of you know what is hype cycle. Anybody who needs the introduction about hype cycle? Okay, how many of you know hype cycle? That's quite a few, so I need to explain what is hype cycle. Okay, it's a very common word nowadays uh, for businessmen who are sitting in the front rows to know about where they fit inside this hype cycle. So what is it is basically the expected value of technology versus the time it takes for fulfillment. So basically any new uh, technology which comes during innovation, we call it as innovation trigger. There are lots of resources, lots of funding, lots of people entering there to try it out and push the technology. And what we call this as peak of inflated expectation, that means it has reached its innovation peak. Then it goes into the trough of uh, disillusionment where yeah, few people take over this from innovation to mass production and into the market. And finally, the slope of enlightenment, where a lot of people join us to make profits and expand this over. And it goes to a productivity plateau where anyone, most of them can make any of these products. So let me go to your topic of the day, IoT. Where does IoT or industrial IoT stand today? So this is the data from last year and from Gartner. Uh, you can Google it, you will get it back. So IoT platform was under peak of inflated expectations, but it has shifted now almost expectation period over. That means there are more developers and today I'm happy that I could see a lot of IoT engineers here. So that means that, yeah, this is true. Uh, if you compare this with the other technologies, uh, very common if you take is brain computer interface or yet to come uh, 4D printing or very easy ones is autonomous vehicles. So it is still yet to take over the IoT's position. So that means, yeah, this is the time the engineers here have to develop platforms for IoT. Moving forward, uh, why did it go beyond the peak? Uh, firstly, that's my uh, analysis. So, so collecting data only is useless. Yeah, lots of data. I think I can see WhatsApps and other things now going on with the youngsters over there. There's lots of data available, but are we really processing that data to get some result out of it? Or for the sake of generating the data, we are reading it. So frequency of data acquisition, how fast you want to take data, how slow, depends. Uh, what is the format of this data? Uh, each one gives a different format. There's no standard format yet, formatted for IoT. 
And where do you collect this data? Is it at the sensor edge node or at a gate server, a gateway server? And uh, do you process all this data in the cloud using a Google server, which consumes like some gigawatts of power? And uh, you save energy using IoT, but you spend that in a Google server analyzing this data. And finally, how do you predict failures? Because coming to industrial IoT, the most important word is, I would like to predict the failure before it happens. I just met a gentleman from one of the biggest car industry in Chennai. So they want to predict their line down before something happens. It's not periodical maintenance, it is predictive maintenance. So how do I predict that failure using IoT? And for all this, uh, any one bunch of people cannot do it. You need lots of partnership from edge, and edge nodes, system integrators, we call it, who make the whole system depending on the application and what kind of, kind of system you got to use depending on the equipment you use. You are using the CNC machine, textile machine, you have motors and so on. So which kind of system do you know? And you don't know what system the device makers like us make and give it to you to make a platform or a solution. So coming next to the focus areas, uh, Rome, at least uh, most of our partners were covering it, focuses on these four major areas for IoT. And more importantly is detection of unusual thing happening in the systems. If it's a usual thing happening, I don't want that data. It's junk. So machine health, which is very much today's topic, uh, what I think is basically is for productivity up, quality improvement, and nonstop production of your shop flows. Healthcare, yeah, it's quality of life, elder monitoring, and telemedicine in future. Lots is going on in that. Infrastructure, again, we have done lots on infra health management, like I have a bridge, spent a few million dollars, and what's the lifetime of it? Am I going to do a periodical maintenance or a predictive maintenance? So using predictive maintenance, I can enhance the life of the bridge for the investment what I've done. So those things are coming up in a bigger way. Finally, uh, including in India, where agriculture is the major bread winner for our GDP, most of our GDPs are counted on the rains. I think the visitors here from US would probably know that. Uh, the GDP of India very much depends on rains in India. So this year we have good rain, that means we have good GDP. One of the reasons is the agriculture. And agriculture, the labor uh, cost is increasing. So they want to improve the yield. They want to avoid excessive pesticides. Now we have pesticides in agriculture for everything. From before you seed, you start with the pesticide. And finally is to have the full potential of the crops with the water table going down. So you can use IoT there. So let me come back to the topic of today's uh, machine health. So this is very simple thing of you monitor, then you use an algorithm to detect an unusual thing happening. Then you send that unusual data through your communication devices to your cloud, analyze it, then feedback to the machine to monitor it in a degradable manner or a maintenance manner and so on. So to give you all these snapshots for my future slides, uh, I would like to show you a small video that will give you what I'm going to talk in the next few slides. Video, please. Connect. In just a short period of time, the internet grew into a vast network that covered all parts of the globe. This changed people's lives almost overnight and fundamentally transformed the framework of society. And now, collecting big data from the emerging IoT sector that connects people, services, and things signals another major shift for society and the world. Backed by new challenges and innovation that leads to advancements in different areas, the role of semiconductors that support a variety of technologies has changed dramatically. And in the pursuit of more stringent quality, greater miniaturization and lower power consumption, 
expectations for the evolution of semiconductor devices that are key to creating new technologies and services are quickly gaining momentum. At Rome, along with reliable technology and expertise in the field of analog power cultivated since the company was founded, Using proprietary solutions that leverage our broad sensor portfolio with market-proven wireless technologies, we now fully support the new trend of manufacturing. Now, let's take a look at semiconductor solutions that will shape your future. Towards new manufacturing methods and technologies, Led by Industry 4.0 in Germany, there is a growing movement towards innovation in the manufacturing industry on a global scale by leveraging the latest technologies, including AI and IoT. To meet the need for big vision in which production systems are optimized by analyzing data aggregated on the cloud, Rome offers monitoring solutions that incorporate various sensors along with wireless communication. Rome's industry-leading sensor lineup combines sensor elements created using MEMS and photonics technologies with analog front-end technology that amplifies weak sensor signals with superior accuracy. And in order to take full advantage of the wide range of versatile sensors based on the operating environment, Rome provides a number of wireless communication solutions. Rome supports the integration of IoT in manufacturing by combining three technologies along with an MCU. An example is a solution that makes it possible to easily introduce IoT to existing factory equipment. <laughs> 多くの損失を生む可能性がございます。そのため近年、マシンヘルスと呼ばれる工場の設備モニタリングによって、未然に機器の故障を防ぐといったことが重視されております。The key phrase is machine health. Data accumulated by various sensors is analyzed as meaningful data by the MCU and transmitted wireless to a gateway. This system is capable of monitoring the operational status of equipment from anywhere by aggregating data on a cloud server. In this demo, in order to support a wide variety of equipment, we propose 11 different sensor nodes along with a network environment utilizing multiple wireless protocols. One example is N Ocean's ultra low power wireless communication standard. Energy harvesting is used, enabling wireless communication without a wired power supply or batteries by generating power from the environment. Taking advantage of this capability allows for use in places that were impossible in the past. <coughs> Let's take a look at how the vibration sensor is used in this demo. An accelerometer attached to the pump motor and wireless communication node are installed in the equipment. Energy generated from the weak vibration of the motor eliminates the need for wiring for the power supply and communication. Data obtained by the sensors is wirelessly transmitted to control equipment, which automatically takes preventive measures such as stopping a pump and lighting up the signal tower upon detection of abnormalities. At the same time, this information is sent to the cloud via a gateway, making it possible to monitor the operating status even remotely. Another wireless standard is Y-Sun's specified low-power 920 MHz bun. Due to the advantages of lower power consumption, longer range, and more robust transmission compared with ZigBee, adoption is increasing in a variety of fields, especially in factories with many obstacles, where it is expected to provide stable, effective wireless communication. Under what type of environment do you recommend IoT adoption? 
One of Worm's strengths is the ability to provide optimized wireless networks from a broad range of wireless solutions. 私たちの持つ無線とセンサーの技術を組み合わせモジュール化しお客様のニーズに合わせた最適なソリューションをご提供してまいります。With worldwide shipments of sensors expected to reach more than one trillion in the next few years, Worm is able to flexibly respond in manufacturing by creating an environment that allows anyone to easily and effectively introduce IoT to existing systems and infrastructure. Going forward, Worm will continue <coughs> to provide semiconductor solutions that support manufacturing and expand the possibilities of IoT. Thank you very much. I hope you had a good visualization of what I'm going to talk from now. So it will be census and uh, a few topics on wireless. So back to machine health monitoring. So this is a very typical factory line uh, in manufacturing uh, scenario. So visualization, what we feel is not done yet uh, for the data aggregation and collection of lots of data. For example, you would have seen at the, our room booth, uh, these type of tower lights are still pretty much wired, analog type, and temperature monitoring or current monitoring, so which goes on to these uh, industrial systems through a PEC is pretty much still on a wired state. These sensors using wireless technology, again, you have your own hurdles, like I can't touch this machine, my guarantees will be void. I may not be able to really wire inside a factory environment. I need lots of cabling on a motor. So this comes to a solution from Rome, actually is the retrofit sensors. So without touching the machine's basic architecture, I just clip on, plug on, paste on some sensor so that I can collect the required data, whether it is a vibration sensor onto this or a CT, it's a current transformer sensor uh, to monitor the current from the motor, and so on. I mean, you can have temperatures and other things. So this gives you a very good guarantee terms, no void, so you can still have the system running, you can have your guarantee terms, and you don't need a very complex programming to do and collect this data over your factory lines. So what we offer is sensors, wireless modules, and uh, battery-less sensor solutions. So this is again uh, the market data, what we have collected after going to a lot of industrial IoT and factory, smart factory uh, enablers. So currently we are here with uh, system designs and uh, development and installation is happening with the technical feasibility. Now there are IIoT standards coming out more firm and uh, more visualization as application wise, uh, people want to take the currents, uh, the MI for magnetic sensors and so on. And very recently, there are equipments which are certified for IoT, which you can buy them. So already the equipment makers have come out with their machines with all these sensors, at least the basic sensors built onto the machines. So moving forward, uh, we see for next at least 10 years, there'll be still a demand for retrofit sensors, like plug and play. You want to convert your present factory line into a IoT line. And uh, it will take some more time for data analytics using AI. It's picking up, but again, the platforms are still not stabilized. So that will come into industrial IoT. So we see the application part, yeah. You have visualization already been done, then analysis will soon uh, catch up. So back to the similar slide. So how do I do for uh, example of uh, this one is for the motor health monitoring for predictive maintenance inside an industry. So for current sensing, I can sense the current change uh, that directly relates, relates to the rotor health or the bearing health. So once your bearing is bad, the current consumption from the motor is different, and that can be sensed using a current energy harvester. So you don't need, again, any cabling for this. You just clip it on to these wires. You get the current data onto your data concentrator. 
Uh, same thing again for uh, motor vibration. We have uh, energy harvesters with vibration sensors. So they follow a global standard called Envotion. And similarly for bearing motors or the pump hull, uh, you can have a current energy harvester which can take current and it's very nearby. It can even connect to the vibration sensor on the pump. And finally the signal tower, uh, just by adding on a clip-on, you can convert a real analog signal tower which is connected through wires into uh, wireless. Then moving upline, yeah, you can use sub gigahertz with a the hopping. Then go to your PLC from there. You have the system already to send it to the cloud. So this is a typical example of the current sensor I was talking. Uh, you can have vibration and current uh, onto these sensors. And uh, it's totally wireless. Uh, it generates its own electricity with an energy harvester module. And uh, how do I monitor? Uh, this is a small example of this motor vibration. So you can monitor the normal versus what's happening today. So at certain frequencies, you see an unusual thing happening. So from there, you take on, have your analytics. Then you can figure out, yeah, when is, when is this motor going to stop working or malfunction? Moving on, uh, this is uh, with the Again, current sensor module development. Uh, we are developing these type of current sensors. You can collect the data from motor drives or your equipment all the way to your home appliances if you want uh, for, say, washing machines or refrigerators. You can collect the amount of energy those systems are uh, using. Then using your gateway, throw it onto the cloud, give an analytics, make it visualize, feedback to them, then control the systems. Uh, this is again a FA market solution. I took an example of tower light since uh, we have the demonstration here. So the current tower light uh, normally is wireless if you take a normal factory or a motor. Yeah, you don't still monitor so much unless you have the wired meters of voltage and currents. And in future, say, robotics. So this is the tower light. Uh, so you just add on this clipboard. Uh, it's an energy harvester using a solar module, which has a transmitter. So just clip on to the existing tower light. So you convert this analog tower light into an IoT-based tower light. So you're not tampering any of your systems inside your manufacturing line. Your warranty terms are there. You still have a backup with a wire until you get stabilized with IoT systems of wireless. So what's inside this? As I said, uh, there's a solar panel. Uh, and using energy harvester of Envotion standard, it has a wireless module, you know, the main PCB with power supply circuits. And on this stick, uh, you could see ambient light sensors, which basically detect whether the light is on or off. So they send the data to the transmission module, and you can send it over. And the uh, good thing about this is no battery replacement. So you just fit and forget, maybe 10 years, 15 years. Yeah, it keeps on working. And uh, next, uh, I'll be talking a bit of sensors. So definitely most of you would know the basics of accelerometers. So let me jump on to uh, the necessity of a vibration sensor, or we call it as accelerometer, as MEMS device. So you have two major things, one to detect the gravity, the other to have linear acceleration, x, y. So you get total of three axis detection using an accelerometer. Uh, moving on to gyro, you can have a angular rate measurement, uh, rotation for three axis again. And very common magnetometers, which are pretty much onto your smartphones nowadays, is to measure the magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field. Basically, the compass, what you use on your application, uses this sensor. So that, again, you can have a three axis. So in the market now, at least for Rome, uh, we have three axis, six axis, and all the way to nine axis by combining these three categories into a one chip. So Rome Group company, Kionix USA, is part of Rome Group from 2009 and one of the third biggest MEMS manufacturer. And we have lots of products on Mauser. You can buy them. 
And uh, moving on to MEMS, uh, the one I have told you is more of a mechanical thing, what you see here, is transformed into a MEMS structure. Uh, basically, accelerometer works like this. You have a mass, you have a spring, you have a damper and a frame. So when this guy shakes on, so the capacitance at this area changes. So that's pretty much uh, college knowledge. So moving on to MEMS, uh, you have these microstructures, which are into microns, like less than four microns, fixed electrodes, movable electrodes. So when these guys move, something like this, so you have a change in capacitance that gives you a signal out. So that's basics of accelerometers. So this is principle. Yeah, you at rest versus you move to the left. Yeah, this guy is pulling it down. So the capacitance change, you get the data out. So I skip this. This is basically X, Y, Z axis measurements for tilt detection. You know, pretty much nowadays people are very familiar with games and smartphones. So this is part of your smartphone thing. So back to our kionics, uh, we have uh, had earlier is lots of consumer application sensors, MEM sensors. And uh, now recently we have increased into automotive and industrial because inside a machine you have roughly like 30, 40 sensors. And at least in that there'll be at least 10, 10, 12 for vibration, accelerometers, gyros, and magnetic. So you have now the applications all the way to machine health modules, to smart card IDs using a sensor inside, inside the smart card, washers, dryers, drones, and sports equipment. Everyone started using accelerometers and gyros. You can dump the data onto your app, onto your phone. And uh, for machine health, uh, for example, if you take a motor or a pump with a very abnormal vibration, so you can definitely have a predictive maintenance done on it before it fails or stops. And a huge market is coming again uh, in India for, uh, we call it as the logistic data loggers. So means uh, every package that's been uh, shipped now with the e-commerce, you have a data logger kept inside your carton box. So that collects the data of vibration, temperature, humidity, Depending on the, if it's a food package, you need all this. But if it's a electronic, you are buying a smartphone and it's being shipped by, say, Amazon. So you want to know that whether the shipper has really dumped this bag somewhere or thrown it from one place to another, which would have caused one of the sensor inside your smartphone malfunction. You can have all that details onto the data logger application. So sensors are going on to places which we didn't imagine into logistics, which we, uh, 10 years back we didn't imagine they will go there. And one more type of sensor you just know, so is gyro. Gyro is basics of rotation, angular velocity using Coriolis force. So you have an axis of rotation and you have a weight mass and a moving speed, then you can get it. Then coming to the MEMS way of doing this sensor, it's basically you have this movable part and the silicon substrate and when there is a rotational speed and a velocity between them, you get this force. So gyro sensor applications, many. I mean, since everyone has this, so you definitely understand gyro's application for rotation, a lot of games you can use this. So all this is done by these gyros and very recently into robotics drones a lot and of course to medical and this is a big industry again the games so this is an interesting thing for industrial iot uh, mi sensors so earlier days of magnetic impedance was hall ic it like uh, the one carrying their ipad uh, you have the close cover or your laptop there you close the cover it shuts down your lcd uh, these are all magnetic sensor applications but it's pretty much zero one application that you don't need to know how far it is and all. But the recent development of these MI sensors, so uh, this is the Rome part BM1422. So the current consumption is very, very low and the noise is much lower following the principle of a basic amorphous wire with a coil. So this is how the chip looks like. So it's in picotesla level. That means it is 10,000 times 
more sensitive than the hall ICs which were earlier there. So where do I use them? I'll come back to the application later. So this is what it does. Uh, you know the Earth magnetic field. I don't know in Chennai how much it is, but roughly if you take Brazil is around 23 micro Tesla, and uh, China is 49 micro Tesla because it depends on the place where you are. Uh, this looks less dense, so it should be somewhere around 35 for Chennai, if I'm right. So it takes the magnitude of Earth magnetic field and the inclination angle is not constant too. So let me put it in a better way. So when there is no magnetic field, yeah, this is like a simple compass we used to play at school. So it shows perfect north-south. But if you have an external magnetic field, it gets deviated. So your H total will be different from the ideal one. So that's put into this place here. It's so very much part of industrial IoT for your machines or robotics and so on. You may have seen this. I think most of the phones even today have that. You got to do an eight before you start your compass. So most of you know why it was if you have Googled it. So basically is uh, this figure for XY axis plot. So magnetic sensor, when the device with the sensor is swinging in eight, you are going to recalibrate it for your magnetic pole. So what we have done this is using an algorithm. So if it is affected by external magnet, doing an eight makes it reset or offset all the differences. So we have found an algorithm that because in industrial robotics, you can't move the machine like an eight before you take the data out of it. So we have developed an algorithm which doesn't need to swing this figure eight and you can collect uh, pretty much the original data without a reset. So where do you use this? Uh, we have a use case uh, already in China. You can do this in your industry for your industry trolleys or forklifts. Now you've got to monitor them where they are going. Has it gone to that place or not? So this is what MI sensor does. There is an MI sensor inside with a wireless module and a small battery. You may have to replace that once in three, four years. So it's pretty much you can put it on, on the floor or on the road if it is part market. So the first generation is basically, it was MI sensor collecting the data using a smart street light, then sending the data to a data concentrator and going on. So you will know where the vehicles are parked or even the traffic light systems, how many vehicles are there waiting in the red light to get a signal off. So moving on, uh, this is very familiar in most of the cities uh, here again. It's a loop coil principle used for smart parking, even in industries for forklift uh, location and other things. And this you could see in some of the car parks, car parking, uh, you have these ultrasonic things detecting whether the vehicle is there or not. And photo sensors have come recently. And the ultimate thing is magnetic sensors. So this is less than the size of a Coke bottle. So you just have a small hole and push it in, then it stays there. And uh, the battery life is like four, four, four years at least, the recent one, what we have installed. And you don't need to do all this wiring, this looping, uh, stop the traffic to do this loop coil and other things. So it's finding more applications nowadays into industrial IoT. So this is how the housing looks like. Uh, there is an MI sensor inside with the transmitter module using Wysun or even LoRa. Uh, then you have a receiver, basically a data concentrator you call it. Then you house it. So Rome provides the sensors and an MCU from our Hoki Semi, now it's called Lapis. And uh, we provide the whole sensor module to plug and play. So you can have this housed into whatever type of box you would like to, then use it as a parking sensor in, a, in your industry or a tray movement sensor. When you have a conveyor with the trays moving on, you can see which trays, how many trays have crossed a point so that's about uh, sensors. We have lots more sensors. So if you have time before you go to lunch, you can come to Rome Corner. We have uh, sensor kits and other things. So moving on, I have a very few minutes to talk about wireless. Some of our partners have gone uh, wide into what is 
LoRa Wi-Fi. Today I would like to talk about two communication modules which are getting very, very popular in industrial IoT. One is, uh, we call it as Wisun, Wisun and uh, Envotion. So let me quickly go to the introduction. So Wisun has applications all the way into smart cities, smart agriculture, medical to an extent coming up. Facility management is a big one <coughs> and infrastructure, uh, we call it as infra health monitoring. So where does it sit compared to the other communication things? So Wi-Fi is a global alliance. Uh, why, why soon? Sorry, why soon is a global alliance similar to Wi-Fi, and uh, you can get almost a one kilometer range with a very high data, and uh, it can do hopping, and it can do two-way communication. So compared to LoRaWAN or Sigfox or the standard IEEE 15.4K, so this follows the 15.4G. There's a physical layer, and the data rate is pretty okay and the range is pretty much okay until one kilometer. So definitely you have this base station type communications like LoRa with a very less data being thrown and a sick fox. So this gives a good snapshot compared to the other things. I don't say they are bad but uh, we all coexist depending on the environment or the ecosystem. So Wison is mainly used for edge node communication. When you have a sensor, you use a Wison with a small battery, you don't touch the battery for two, three years. So that is the strength of Wison. It's very low power consumption. It can do a multi-hop. So for example, uh, smart street light. You can go 24 kilometers at a stretch without a data concentrator. Then you have a place where you have the power supply, then you use a LTE or a Wi-Fi to throw it to cloud. So that's one very good thing. When you can hop, uh, it can go much beyond the Sigfox, say 10 kilometers. And IP support, uh, cyber security, which is today's major headache in IoT. So this is used uh, already now, the success is in Japan for smart meters. So Rome supplies close to 80% of our modules for smart meters in Japan using Wison and home energy management. So I can hack if possible, the, this system, and I can make Japan dark in a day. So the layers and the application uh, stacks are pretty much uh, very standard and very secure. So it's been proven and been used in the market, so it's easy to use it for IIoT also. So this is Wison Alliance, so it's a standard which started in Japan, but it's pretty much now an international standard. You can visit Wison Alliance website, we have all these details. And uh, good thing is the high versatility and low power. So why Rome? Why Rome is talking about Wison? Because we were the first company uh, as a promoter, together with Cisco and NICT, which is in Japan, a total of nine companies, we started this as a promoter. And we have lots of contributors and observers. Uh, there are more than, now it should be close to 200 participating companies. And for profiles, uh, we have Econet profile. Uh, this is mainly for the energy management, like smart meter, industrial smart meters, industrial power management. Uh, this is coming up pretty much fast. By 2019 top, we will have field area network, FAN for Ryzen, and RLMM in future. So someone was asking about latency obstacles. So why it is good? Uh, basically, it is a sub gigahertz band. We are releasing 868. That will suit India. And uh, the loss in communication, the free space propagation, I think most of the engineers know this formula. So low frequencies transmit better. So this is a typical 2.4 gigahertz. So inside an industry, you have obstacles. And naturally, you have metal shieldings. You have big blocks of things hiding the areas. So you will tend to lose the data. So what does the 920 megahertz do is it is easy to diffract. So it can give you much better distance. Even at the obstacle, you still can get more than half a kilometer. And uh, story, I mean, it's very strong against 
compared to a 2.4, say, Zigbee, and so on. So this is a very low RF interference if you compare to Wi-Fi. I'm not uh, complaining about it. It's 13 channels, but why soon is 38 channels. So once the transmission is ready, then you wait until the another transmission goes on. Then it connects. So carrier sense is performed before the transmission. So you don't have this mutual interferences, and the limits are set at say 400 millisecond. So it doesn't occupy the channel, make the channel busy, like LoRa. You gotta wait until. The channel is free. So this is a snapshot. Again, it's on our website, so you can see where you will use Wison for what purpose versus the other standards for applications. So Rome develops uh, with the Rome Group company, uh, Lapis Semiconductor, uh, taking care of RF and MCUs. We come out with a module uh, which has a built-in antenna type, external antenna type. And being a founder member of Bison Alliance, uh, we have the golden sample test bed CTBU. So if you start using Rome's uh, Bison module, you are automatically certified for Bison. So you don't have to pay a few thousand dollars to get it certified, then go through the time it takes for RF uh, certification. And uh, for industrial systems particularly, if you would like to have a built-in antenna or extendable, it has an option. It's a plug and play pretty much. And we, one good thing is you can get this Wison USB dongle, then connect it to your system. Then you can start transmitting. So you don't have to prepare a gateway separately. Your present gateway, you can connect through UART USB. You can convert your system into a Wison IoT transmitter. So these are the current products. Uh, if you are really interested in putting onto your gateway, we give you this module. But if you want to plug and play dongle, dongle, we have the USB type. So this guy sits on your FA or factory automation machine. And if you really want to make your own module, we have the RF LSI separately. So these modules are pretty much available in Mouser. Yeah, you can have the kits. So Rome has a CTBU test bed. So any other YSIN module in the world should pass with Rome's test bed unit to get certified for YSIN. That means if you are user of Rome module, you are automatically a YSIN user member. So you don't have to pay a penny. So you automatically become a YSIN member. If not, the Alliance membership is close to a few thousand dollars. So don't have to worry about it. Just use Rome's Wison for that. Back to your industrial IoT. So it's there already in the market. So rest assured about your cybersecurity or obstacles management. So you need a gateway. You put it onto your sensor beds or sensor units. So you can collect all this data. If you have an obstacle here, this guy hops on to some other module to go to your gateway. So this is uh, one of our partner, Adventic. So they make uh, lots of edge nodes, end nodes. So they use now uh, Wison to send the data. And uh, for smart agriculture, it is pretty much already in use. Uh, so it can take care of half a kilometer to one kilometer line of sight. So you can have multi-hop. You can measure pH, water, and so on. So this is how the module looks like. Uh, you can go to our website to get, download the sh uh, reference data sheets or reference uh, blocks for EV case. So it's pretty much built into all into one. And now we have made it as MCU with RF into one chip, which has been just released. So the earlier one is with a built-in antenna. And you can connect to your host uh, CPU. And if you want to have a plug and play, you can buy the USB dongle, then connect it. The second uh, wireless which I was talking about is Envotion. Again, it started in 2001 as a spin-off in Germany. So now it's uh, pretty much a global standard, expanding vigorously into wireless communication with energy harvesting. So that's the keyword for Envotion. So again here, uh, we were the promoter of Envotion, first in Asia as a promoter company. And a lot of companies now, close to 300 people are part of 
N Ocean Alliance. Where does N Ocean sit? Is uh, basically you have the Wi-Fi's, you have the Zigbee's. So this N Ocean. There are other bands also available. Uh, uh, you have distance of close to say 100, 200 meters distance, data rate 125 kbps and you don't need a battery. So that's a good thing. You harvest your energy through uh, mechanical sensors or solar or thermocouples and uh, it's a worldwide standard. So this is where uh, the n version compared to Zigbee stands. It's still on par with the data rate and uh, the distance. <clears throat> so how do, do, do they do the energy harvesting? As I was mentioning, electromagnetic induction like switches. So the coil moves uh, onto the core, then you get a few microwatts of energy. Or the very typical one is a solar. So this combines with an RFIC and a low loss power supply technology. So this whole thing sits into one module. So you just need a double sided tape to stick it where you want to, to collect the data. So these are the pretty much very bare modules what you see in the lineup. This is a switch, uh, this is a transmitter switch. Uh, this is using the solar cell what you have just seen on the tower light. And lots of our partners have market applications already. Uh, human detection, pyro sensors, tower light, what you have just seen in the demo corner, uh, CO2 sensors, vibration harvesters as such, the repeaters, temperature, humidity, contacts. So you have the CT sensor, uh, which was just released this year. So you can throw any, any of these physical data through an ocean without any batteries. So coming to machine health, uh, as you have seen this picture earlier, so here we have an N-Ocean sensor. So it collects the energy from the vibration. So it's a few microwatts and uses that energy to send this vibration sensor data to your gateway. A similar thing for temperature sensor, which sits on your bearing module. So once the bearing is faulty or going to be fault, temperature rises. So this can be thrown again to your gateway to do a predictive uh, maintenance. So key points of summary is batteryless wireless communication enabled by N-Ocean. And uh, if you get batteryless wireless communication, it's maintenance free, easy to connect, patch it onto the system, start collecting the data. So before I end today's presentation, I would like to give a small introduction because the amount of uh, visitors we had to the Rome corner, more than 50% were not aware of Rome Semiconductor. So we are headquartered in Kyoto, Japan, and pretty much in India. So our revenues is close to 3.78 billion this year. Close to 50% comes from LSIs or ICs and discrete and other components offer close to 40% and modules the rest. Uh, in India, we are there in Bangalore, uh, New Delhi and Pune. And uh, we have a design center in Bangalore too for application support and we have some global designs, uh, secure designs being done particularly for automotive from India globally. And company mission quality is our top priority at all times and we use this IIoT later you will be seeing for improving the quality in our own uh, factories. So market specific strategy, definitely automotive for analog power solutions and the EV market is growing, going to grow in India too. Industrial, we are pretty much into FA, energy and infra using our sensor and wireless. And overseas consumer is the worldwide solutions for motor, motor drivers particularly. Manufacturing innovation, we are part of your industrial IoT. We are making our factories, smart factories, to improve our quality, cost, and delivery by visualization of all our wafer foundries and assembly factories. The point is to give you a zero defect line because our company mission quality it has to be promised with zero defects. So we are using this IoT for our quality management. 
So pretty much an analog power solution company. We are into green energies, into solar power inverters using our SIC modules. Automotive contributes to close to 40% of our sales. Uh, social infra, including the 5G network, which is going to come in, and uh, healthcare. It's taking time, but uh, it will definitely be part of the IoT is what we have spoken. And the 4G shift to 5G shift, uh, we are pretty much into cloud server, power devices, and so on. Sensors, I spoke pretty much uh, about the key sensors here. We do have RGB pulse sensors, IR, UV sensors, and so on. Uh, this is our soil sensor which is used for smart agriculture. You just put your bow in the paddy field, collect the data through your data concentrator and I don't have to send my grandfather to water it every day. Only when it's dry, automatically the pump starts watering. You have a humidity sensor to take care of the humidity, water level. So all these are put into that. It can tell even when it needs the fertilizer if you properly program it. So these are coming up very soon to India. We are now developing for India because of the wireless frequency thing. And uh, recently we had a huge earthquake in Japan, so we have seismic sensors uh, with vibration again. Uh, vibration sensors for motor and so on. So these are the all sensors. So we have seen this. Uh, there are UV sensors, hall sensor, pressure sensors, and so on. You can browse our catalogs later. The so this is particularly for industrial market, which we just released. Uh, it can take a uh, G range of plus minus 32 G. That's quite high. Uh, and this is again one more industrial use accelerometers, which is very popular for motor vibration. Uh, this is a gyro combo, what you have seen earlier, the combo of axle and gyros. And this is the latest one, which can give you a 1K byte buffer with the temperature sensor and so on. So as uh, Saswati San has just mentioned about uh, the lucky winners, we have just given our feedback forms. Hopefully everyone got it. So please write your details for Rome to come back. We are giving three sensor kits using Arduino. Uh, these were developed uh, to start evaluation of the sensors within five minutes. Uh, we have seen engineers uh, who can start getting the data within five minutes. You put this sensor kit onto Arduino and uh, you plug your board to your laptop. You start evaluating. So this has eight type of sensors which are built in. So you can start evaluating immediately. And this is available pretty much on Mauser. So you can, I think just now I checked, uh, 27 kits are there in stock in India, India website. So you can get it. So back to the thing I was telling, we use this IIoT for Rome factories. We call it as a smart factory. So to become number one manufacturing plant, we have started in 95. Then in 2013, we built smart lines using our own electronics plus our partners. So today we are into this IoT factory of visualization, basically to upkeep our quality for zero defects. And moving on, uh, by 2020, we are introducing uh, AI into our uh, systems here. So this will enhance the amount of data you collect from the sensor. I don't have to collect all the raw data, throw it to the cloud, and consume so much of power for transmission. So I do edge node computing at the sensor level through AI. Then I throw whatever is required to the cloud then do my predictive maintenance. So this is pretty much our, we have started this with our, uh, one of our Japan factory and Thailand factory this year. So by 2020, all our 14 factories will be uh, smart factories using uh, IoT. So if you happen to come to Japan, please visit Kyoto. That's where Rome headquarters is. And uh, we'll be waiting there to see you sometime. Thank you very much. Any questions for Niranjan? Uh, since we also uh, developed one of the product uh, for smart brush, uh, in which type they have brush, how much pressure they have given to the each uh, teeth, something like that. If the children is not properly brushing, uh, the communication would send to the parent, 
and if the parent is not taken any action then it would send to a insurance guy as well uh, if i use some of your sensor i think it might give a, a different dimension for our product uh, i think uh, before you finish your question a lot of insurers are lobbying with us to put these sensors on to cars and other things so that they can reduce all this what you are saying is i mean we don't call it as a fault monitoring but uh, you can reduce lots of this uh, scams from wrongly i mean claiming from insurance companies so it is coming in Europe. There is a drive recorder company, uh, JVC, comes from JVC. So they have used these uh, pressure sensors, accelerometer gyros, and the insurer gives you right away 30% off if you use that device. Yeah. So that's very much coming into the market because there are so many unclaimed claims. People say that oh someone banged me, but you have the record of what is the banging, what is the acceleration, what is the g-force. And if you have a camera, then yeah, you have the proof for that. So I just want to thank for that. My question is, yes. uh, do we have anything like uh, cyber physical system? Uh, uh, we don't want to touch the existing system what we have in okay. the manufacturing plant or anything. Yes. So on top of that, uh, I think uh, many of the companies are bringing in cyber physical system or Siemens is bringing IoT 2040 without touching anything on the existing PLC. Yeah. Uh, they want to place on top of that existing mm -hmm. PLC and get out the data from that. Mm -hmm. So what is your thought on that, whether it is going to be success or okay. whatever you have mentioned, that is going to work. Okay, let me first tell you what Rome is doing in our factories. We had a similar hurdle when we started. So we didn't touch our existing system. We have EMS system and so many other things uh, which are existing, wired, partial. And uh, what we have done is uh, we used our Wisun module. Uh, it has its own application layer and uh, stack which is pretty much secure, more secure than Wi-Fi, I would say. So once we stabilize this, then we try to drop the dependency on the wired systems. So it takes time. It, it took almost more than two years for us to I mean, remove some of the load from the wired systems. So, I mean, my practical example is you can try with Wison. And uh, I don't say this will go off. The EMS system is there. It has its merits. It will stay on. The only thing is you are not doing much of predictive maintenance now in your factory line. You are doing the regular, regular pre preventive maintenance or collecting the data and so on. I don't see a vibration sensor on a bearing wheel on your CNC machine now. It's only a current sensor or voltage sensor. So this I would think will help you to give you a predictive. If you know that your machine is going to fail after three months, you take the initiative tonight to send your maintenance people. So it will add on the value of your existing system. And we use it for maintaining the quality and the stop time, uh, pretty much like automotive you have your own industry stop time is cost money and lots of disruptions so it gives an value addition for your existing communication systems what you're using that's our personal view what we have done in our practice did i answer your question yeah any more questions hello um uh, can we use a uh, oisen on a moving object in motion? Yeah. In yes. motion. If you are within that 100, 200 meters, for example, if you are on a forklift inside a factory or a trolley, you can still use it. But if you are on the roads, yeah, that's not a practical example for in motion. Hi, uh, myself Nagarajan. Uh, really, your presentation is too informative. No, so thanks for that. Thank and my first question is: uh, You have uh, like uh, smart parking, right? Uh, can we know how it is working? Whether it is working with GPS or UWB, or what is the technology behind it? And second question: uh, What is the range it can identify uh, the cars? Okay, I couldn't get the first question. Smart. Smart parking. Smart parking, yeah. my senses. Okay. 
Okay, so MI sensor as I showed you is a magnetic inductance sensor. So if I have 10 magnets in my pocket and stand on the sensor, it will send you a signal. But normally is whenever you have a metal object coming onto that sensor, it sends a signal. So very simple as that, like what you have the parking loops now. Okay, so how do you send that signal is up to you. So you want to send it on an inversion basis or you would like to, inversion is not practical because this is going underground. Uh, the most practical is Vaisun uh, because you can put the battery, forget it for 4 years, you do not have to dig it to change the battery every 2 months. So, and it has a hopping, so you miss the second transmission, it can go via a third guy and come back to the data concentrator. So the practical thing is for longer battery life, yeah, we recommend Vaisun as a transmitter and MI as a sensor, then just put it underground and forget it. And uh, my second question is, uh, uh, you told right, uh, this NO sun have around 100, meet, 100 meters 100 range. Meters, yes. So what is the feel that uh, the operator will have because uh, right now when I was in soft floor, people are saying because of Bluetooth and wireless, people feel that they feel some headache and some kind of stuff. Really? Yes. Okay. Maybe that is an excuse to get a leave. <laughs> so, I mean, if you get a headache with a Bluetooth, then uh, this guy is sitting in my pocket 15 hours a day, so I should get a heart attack. <laughs> Just kidding, but uh, see, I, I don't know about the health effect, but definitely it's an international standard proven into taking into consideration the interference and other things. So, yeah, if you say that, then, yeah, I mean, people can say that, yeah, something is giving me a headache. Uh, wireless is pretty much even proven, I mean there are standards and people have to go through that RF test and other things to get done and we are talking about for example Vaisun is less than 0.5 watt so even if I wear it on my helmet hopefully it should not give you a headache but again this is a medical thing so <laughs> I support the standards which have been proven for all that uh, maybe or maybe not. <laughs> So this uh, NO sun and uh, E sun, uh, so whether it is allowed inside uh, industries of India? Yeah, pretty much, yes, it is very low power, uh, 868 megahertz should be a free band, very soon 920s will be a free space here, so it is pretty much allowed. Okay. I mean, Thank practically you. usable. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Mohan uh, here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I have it's uh, too flashy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have two questions. One is on the agricultural sensor. Uh, do you have uh, a NPH sensor or is it only uh, the, uh, the humidity and uh, a pH? Yeah. Uh, firstly, this agriculture sensor is a field test project which we have started. So, not all sensors and transmission modules are from Rome. So, we are promoting that as a community's responsibility to save the agriculture. Uh, coming back to your question, few sensors are there, our uh, okay, uh, transmission modules very much we are using Vison, uh, pH, humidity, temperature, uh, these hydros and we use from other partners and uh, vibration we use for some purposes that is only for rice fields, so where you can monitor for example uh, some areas even in India we have cyclones, typhoons, so you should know your, your, whether your farm is already down or by the time you go in the morning you are like you see the full rice field flat, so for that they use the vibration. So other than that it is a partner of companies who are doing this project. Okay. My, my second question is on the vibration sensor. Yeah. Uh, we, we have some implementation uh, using the vibration sensor. So the challenge is if you have to predict what sort of issue is there, say for example a gear misalignment or a bearing wear out, the, the sampling rate has to be really uh, very high and yes. it has to match the RPM of the motor. Yes. Uh, so you need one is the sampling rate, the other one is the data uh, speed. Yeah. Uh, so do you uh, support something like that? Uh, is it a 
a chipset kind of thing or a, a, a module that, that we can use? Yeah, we did this similar module for our wafer manufacturing. Uh, we have the wafers, we call it as wafer dicing, you dice the chips. So we use a diamond blade to dice that. So hmm. this diamond blade after some time degeneration, it breaks off hmm. the blade and it destroys the whole the pad of the, the wafer die. For this what we have done, this is again reference to the NASA data. So we have done the vibration sensor together with our Bison module. Uh, it took long time, six months to get the analytics correct that when this blade is going to fall. Hmm. So the fault line again it depends on the system, if it is a bearing you have to know a lot about your bearing yes. and its fault line and unfortunately these things do not fail within one year, two years. There are bearings which run for 10 years. So you do not know you may have to simulate some failure to know that analytics where is the failure rate. So within three months or before two weeks you know that this bearing is going to go. Uh, it is uh, tough but uh, that can be overcome using AI which I have shown. So AI has a self learning, so neural network basically. So that will take off this time of analyzing for one year to find out the fault line. Hmm. So it analyzes on its own with the AI CNN. Okay. Thank you. So, do you have a, any uh, sensor which sends the this this direction, Praveen? Uh, where is the here, voice here. coming from? Okay. Do you have okay. any product to sense the ultraviolet rays from the sun, so that we can turn the solar panel, get the high intensity of uh, ultraviolet? Perfect. Rays? Just walk ten feet behind you. Okay. Pick up a leaflet called uh, sensor evaluation kit 001. So this has a UV sensor you can connect it onto your Arduino and start testing. So it gives you even the profile of the UV light. So UV sensor basically is pretty much says the UV thing. So we have those sensors, it gives you a 2K pixel profile. So you will ultimately know your panel, I mean your sun position. Then if you have a motor driven control, then you can connect it to the motor driven, then connect it to face the maximum sun rays this it is available. So please later uh, I can talk to you more on that. 